the third day, he rose from the grave. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the one fact that our whole faith is put on. Paul himself says, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, your faith is in vain. If Jesus didn't actually, physically, literally stop being dead after being crucified, being died and buried and descending into hell, get a new religion. I need a new job. All of it comes undone. This all stands on this one simple fact. Christ is risen. Like 500 people saw it. People went to their grave singing hymns about the resurrection because they weren't afraid. People were martyred, like brutally murdered, all hoping that this guy that they saw crucified, they also saw alive again. We are putting our hope in something that historically happened, not in a wish for something better, not in a, I could imagine God being like this, or I could never imagine a God who loves me doing this, but in a God who bled and died for you took away all your sins and rose again. So that when he talks, he talks as somebody who is the Lord over death. He talks as somebody who has authority over the grave. He talks about as, as somebody uh, who has done something that nobody else who has made these kinds of claims has ever done. Somebody else wants to come along and rise from the, the grave, I want to listen to them. If a scientist comes along and conquers death, I'll, I'll hear him out. If another religion says, this is the thing, I can save you from death, and then demonstrates it by doing it himself, we'll talk. Jesus who is dead, is risen. And that means that death itself has been destroyed because sin itself has been forgiven. You see, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so if there's no more sin, there can be no more death. What do you think is going to happen? The resurrection was not a surprise. This was the, the cry of, of, of Christians, of, of, of the faithful, of, of Israel, all the way back, all the way back until uh, since, since the fall, when when. God proclaimed to Eve, the child who would crush the head of the serpent forever, the, the child who would rob death of its sting. For I know that my Redeemer lives, says Job. He actually talks about the resurrection so that even after my flesh is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. We have a hope that endures the last great enemy death because Christ is risen. Let your faith stand on this so that when everything else is falling apart, you can actually ask questions in terms of, of the scope of the, the actual thing at hand. So all of these things that I think are the end of the world can't keep Jesus in the grave. That's the core of our religion now. Think about the worst thing in the world, the thing that you pray over every single night and ask, can it go back in time 2,000 years and put Jesus back in the grave? Or is he still risen? Because if he is still risen, then there is still hope, even in the face of everything that is falling apart in your life. That's not to diminish it, but that's to give hope within it. For all of the things falling apart in your life, for all of your desperate prayers, Christ is risen. And here we have life that even those things cannot destroy. Because, well, he rose. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.